Hi friends, welcome back to All on Unlaw. This is a quick O B G Y N, and today I'm going to talk about macro somia, a big baby. Okay, what's the definition? The definition is the fetus with the estimated fetal weight. EFW is more than 90 to 95 percent time. Okay, remember if it's more than 90 to 95 percent time of gestation age is known as microsomia. If you want to say in a in the form of what you call grams or weight, if it's more than four. Thousand grams to four point five kg. That's a four thousand five hundred grams. Okay, if the baby is more than this, then we call it as microsomia. Okay. Remember the sonogram estimation of uh, estimated fetal weight accuracy in estimating birth weight is poor. Okay, so it's a really very poor. So let's talk about what are the hazards and what, before that I would like to tell you about the risk factors how the patient or how the baby has developed fetus has developed what you call a uh, microsomia. This is seen usually in the mother with what you call gestational diabetes mellitus GDM okay overt diabetes overt diabetes mellitus okay and a prolonged gestation, prolonged like continuous, what's a normal gestation is 9 months, 10 days, right? If it continues for 10, day, 10 months, 11 months, okay? Prolonged gestation. Very important for you, assembly guys. And increase in the BMI, obesity, if the herbies, okay, herbies. An increase in the pregnancy weight gain. She has gained very nice, what you call amazing, uh, what you call uh, weight during her pregnancy, during her trimesters, right? And a multiparity. Male fetus, okay? Male fetus, right? So these are the risk factors the gestational diabetes, mellitus, over diabetes, prolonged gestation increase in what you call obese okay increase in bmi increase in pregnancy weight gain multiparity and the male fetus let's talk about the hazards okay what happens three hazards we're going to talk about one is on a mother one is on a fetus and one if he is born or she is born neonatal hazards right Maternal hazards operate to vaginal delivery because the baby is really very big. So we get this a there will be a pro problem during the labor, right? So we have to go ahead with the cesarean section, emergency cesarean section. So operate to vaginal delivery, perineal lacerations, so big perineal lacerations, okay? Postpartum hemorrhage, uterine atony is a really very big problem. Postpartum hemorrhage, okay? Uterine atony because of the uterine atony. Emergency cesarean section should be done. Pelvic floor injury can be there. Pelvic floor injury. Okay. So these are the complication maternal hazards we see in a microsomic uh, fetus. Um, okay. So if what are the hazards, fetal hazards are shoulder dystocia. This is really very important. Sh shoulder dystocia. Okay. And a birth injury is very important. And the patient can have asphyxia during the what you call uh, birth. Okay, so what are the neonatal hazards? Neonatal hazards the patient is maybe in the NICU for a period, okay, and may undergo hypoglycemia, severe hypoglycemia less than what you call a 40 milligram of deciliter. In hypoglycemia, they can be herbs paralysis because of the injury, because of the shoulder dystocia, right? Herbs palsy. Okay, how do you prevent it? How do you prevent all these things? So have microsomia. So there is no accurate way of predicting or prevention are currently available for this microsomia. Okay, and now let's talk about the management. How do you manage these patients, baby mother with this microsomia? Consider elective cesarean. 
elective seizure instead of going ahead with emergency like c-section okay uh, if effective what you call um, estimated fetal weight is uh, more than 4500 grams in diabetic mother in diabetic mother or more than 5000 gram in non-diabetic mother then you have to consider what you call as elective cesarean section okay cesarean operation okay right so this is a really very important uh, topic for our USMLE step 2 ck thank you so much for watching this video take care